Okay guys, I've just picked up my new, or new to me, 1993 Subaru Liberty wagon and uh, I've got it home and it appears to have a pretty severe exhaust leak. So uh, what I'm going to do is, I've put it up on ramps and I've crawled underneath it and I physically can't see a hole but uh, there's a fair bit of shielding over the exhaust so what I might do is I'm going to start it up and uh, have a listen and then crawl underneath and uh, see if I can find a hole and uh, if there is a hole we'll, we'll pull the pipe out and we'll uh, patch it and weld it otherwise we may even see if we can get a new second hand uh, piece of exhaust so uh, see how we go and uh, let's go from there okay as you can tell I don't know whether the camera microphone will pick that up but there sounds to be a fairly hefty leak coming from about the center of the car it sounds about the same on both sides so what we might do is just have a quick crawl underneath see if we can sort of see or smell any uh, uh, exhaust leaks so I don't know if you can hear me now but uh, it appears to be coming from around the cat converter from what I can hear okay now what I've done I've uh, to try and get a bit more access, just so I'm not crawling, so I can get right over the whole exhaust, I've jacked the car up at the back and put on axle stands. I'm not the most athletic of figures, so uh, crawling around in a tight space isn't my thing. But uh, what I've discovered is that I appear to have... There's your catalytic converter. So basically it's just coming straight out of the pipes. Well actually, that's the cat. That's probably just a resonator, actually. But, yeah, if I'm wrong, please write in the comments. So, what I'm going to do is, I've got to pull, I can feel a lot of air coming out from that heat shield that sits on top of the floor there. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pull the heat shield off, and this is where I'm sort of getting most of the air from. So, and it looks like it's pretty old and original, judging by that heat shield. I wouldn't say an exhaust joint. There's... A new section of tailpipe that's been replaced at some stage in the muffler but I'd say all this is original now I've got to get these bolts undone they're 12 mil now if anybody's ever pulled anything off an exhaust you know they're going to be very very difficult because they get all the mud and water and heat and all the issues that exhaust get so what I'm going to do is I've got an arsenal of tools up there which I'll show you now and then I'll attempt to pull the heat shield off I've actually probably exaggerated the arsenal of tools. What I've got is WD-40 or lubricant, CRC or I'm not really sure what you know, blokes use overseas, but in Australia WD-40 is uh, the most common. Then I've got my 12mm ratchet ring spanner. I've got a special, what they call a Metrinch spanner. I don't know if they sell these overseas. I don't know if the camera will focus on Basically what they are is a universal, they fit imperial, metric, basically any nuts. But they specialise in rounded nuts because they've got this nice round shoulder and they'll grab onto any nut. So if I do, you know, turn the head. And then what I'm going to do is use my ratchet with a nice six-sided socket. So that basically I'm going to get a good bite on it from first go. So what I'll do is I'll lubricate them with the WD-40, hit them with the socket. Then if they loosen up, I'll do them with the ratchet ring spanner. And if they round, I'll use the Metrinch. So... Then, if that doesn't work, I'll uh, grind them off and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll start pulling them off and uh, see how we go.
Okay, so I've got the heat shield off from the floor and what I've discovered is that I've got a dirty great big hole. You can see it right there. Blind Freddy could see that. So what I would ultimately like to do, but I'm not sure if I can, is basically take the exhaust off from that flange, go straight back to that piece of pipe <coughs> and delete this resonator muffler. Um, what I'll do is I might jump on the internet, put a post on a couple of forums, just see what people think, whether that can be done. Or the other option is go to the wreckers and get that piece there. But the risk I have is it may not hook up at the back where the new piece of pipe's done. But, or alternatively, I could pull it off and weld it over. Okay, so basically just fill that hole with the MIG. But what I'm gonna do, just while I'm trying to still work out whether there's any other issues, any holes in the muffler, I'm gonna do this. Okay, this is gonna be a very dodgy repair. Basically what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use Sally's Need It. Um, I think you guys have a, or well, the Americans have a version um, of JB Weld. Basically what it is is a metal epoxy putty, or epoxy putty with metal parts in it. And basically what you do is knead the two parts, so it's a two part recipe. Knead it, stick it to something, and it'll patch the hole. It's tappable, drillable, I've used it for a lot of different things when I haven't been able to uh, get a weld and I've never had it fail on me. So what my plan is, is to knead up a nice ball of it, put it over the hole, then I'll cut a piece of the heat shield away and rivet that over it basically as a support. So, um, and this isn't going to be a permanent thing. This is only going to be while I work out what I'm going to do to the exhaust and basically just to stop it sounding like a tractor. So I'll get busy with that and we'll uh, go back underneath the car and I have, I've cleaned the uh, area with a wire brush, sprayed it with degreaser, so it is nice and clean. And this Sally's Need It should adhere to it uh, quite well. Okay, for anyone that is interested in the Sally's Need It, here's what it looks like out of the packet. So basically, just a tube of like plasticine, and there is the two parts of the mix. So there's the black section and the grey section, so you can see all like you look at it closely, there's little metal filings and bits and pieces in the grey section. So what I do is, I'm going to chop off quite a sizeable globule. Wrap it back up in the plastic because it goes off when it's mixed and when it gets to air. I'll put that back in the tube. And then, as the name implies, you knead it. So you mix the two bits together. And as you mix it, changes colour and goes nice and soft. So I'll go do that, and uh, then I'll show you once I've stuck it to the muffler. Now sadly, I couldn't get my little patch in, purely because where I needed to drill the holes in the resonator um, was too high up on the floor, and I couldn't get my drill in, and I don't have a right angle drill. So basically what I need to do is um, pull the pipe out, drill the holes, rivet the patch on but what I'm going to do is if I'm going to do that I may as well replace the resonator or delete the resonator so for now what I've done is I've put the glob over the hole which is not even a stopgap measure pretty ordinary actually so now that I've done that what I'm going to do is basically investigate how I can do a full and complete repair um, by completing the resonator um, or deleting it and that'll be part two of this video so if you're interested, stick around. A um, couple of other things I'm going to do with this car is um, I'm going to replace the timing belt and water pump, thermostat, possibly throw a new radiator in it while I'm doing all that, but <clears throat> it'll sort of depend on what I can find on eBay and how much I'm going to pay. But uh, yeah, so for now, what we're stuck with is there's the gloop. So Seems to hold, just put 50Ks on it, and uh, doesn't sound like a tractor now. But uh, yeah, stay tuned, and uh, we'll get to further repairs.